I'm Alan Lawrence of WonderTouch, and in this tutorial, I'll use Particle Illusion 3 to recreate the transporter effect from the latest Star Trek movie. Particle Illusion 3 already has emitters for creating many of the older transporter effects. The classic glitter effect from the original series, the scan down version from the Next Generation series, the Voyager version, as well as the Borg transporter and many more that I won't go into here. What we want is this new effect from the latest movie. Let's take a look at this clip from the trailer a few times because it's so short. If we analyze it, you can see a blurry glowing version of Spock form first, with lots of orbiting energy specks which quickly fade away as he materializes fully. It's actually quite a complex effect, but I think particle illusion is up to the challenge. We'll start with our Spock image. We need to isolate the character by making the background transparent, which is easy enough to do using your favorite paint application. Then save the image with an alpha channel. I suggest PNG format. Since Particle Illusion has restrictions on the image sizes you can use for particles, I'm going to create a second version that is 512 by 512 pixels and save that as PNG too. We'll use this second image later in the tutorial. In Particle Illusion, set your stage size. I'm using 1280 by 720. Then double click the empty layer thumbnail and select the image with alpha channel. If you get a message about your image not being the same size as the stage, click no so it doesn't resize the stage to fit the image. As always, I don't want to build an emitter from scratch, so I start with something similar to what I want. In this case, I'll use a really simple classic transporter emitter. Add it to the stage and let's start customizing. First, select the width and reset it by right-clicking the graph window and choosing Reset. Now switch to Select Mode. Make sure you're at frame 1, then drag the handle on the area emitter until it covers the area you need. Before moving off frame 1, choose the Number property and reduce the number of particles. When you increase the size of an area emitter, the number of particles is automatically increased by particle illusion, often too much. Reducing the number now will make things more responsive, and you can increase the number again later if needed. I'll increase the size of the particles a little too, so we can see them better. Hit the spacebar to see what we've got so far. I can see the particles moving upward slightly, so I'll reduce the velocity to zero. We've got a pretty boring effect right now, but it's ready for the big changes. First, we'll restrict the particles to be created only on our character. Right-click the image and select Properties to open the Emitter Properties dialog. Click the Mask Emitter with Images checkbox. Click the Options button that appears, then select the same image that you use for the layer background image. Click OK to close the Emitter Properties dialog so we can review. You may notice that the particles are forming the shape of Spock, but they're offset slightly. That's due to the way the Area Emitter Mask function works. To make sure there's no offset, Put your emitter in the exact center of the stage. The best way to do this is to select the emitter name in the hierarchy so the position graph is displayed, then reset the position graph. Now the hardest part of this project, creating the orbiting energy specs, which I'll call spinners from now on for simplicity. I know we'll have to use an image sequence in order to get the orbiting motion, and fortunately I know that one of the emitter libraries has an image sequence in it that's pretty close to what we need. Look at the April 2007 emitter library. You'll see a shape called Ring 2 Spin. It's good, but not perfect. We'll have to do some work on it. Select it, then click the Export Shape button and save it as TGA. You'll see that we now have 36 image files. If we look at them in order, we see a couple problems. The first is that the spinner makes a complete 360 degree orbit. We don't want a complete orbit, because we want the spinners to look like they're going behind our transportee, so we'll need to drop some frames. The second problem is that the first frame in the sequence is in the front, but we want the spinner to start at the left side and then end on the right. Not too hard to resequence these frames by renaming them, so after a little work, here's what we have. Pretty close, but one more change is needed. We need to remove parts of some frames so that it appears that our subject is blocking the back part of the spinners as they move around. It doesn't need to be too critical, and not too many frames are involved, so I'll just manually paint out the parts I don't want in my favorite paint app. Here's what we have now. Looks pretty good to me. Back in Particle Illusion, 
Open the Emitter Properties dialog, get to the Change Shape page, then click the New Shape button under the Image Preview. Now select one of the modified spinner images, click Yes to use the sequence, then click OK and again. Obviously, we need to crank up size more. There are two things wrong here. First, the spinners are orbiting in all random directions. Fix this by selecting the Behavior tab and setting the particle angle to Specify and set the value to zero. The second issue is that all the spinners are starting at the same time and moving together, or at least that's what it looks like. That's because they're all moving through the image sequence the same way. Click the random start frame box to mix it up. I can also tell that the particles are living much too long, so select the life property and reduce its value. You'll need to reduce life variation too. It also looks like there might be something going on with the transparency gradient since the particles are flashing. Look at the colors tab and you'll see the repeat slider under the transparent gradient is not zero. Move it all the way to the left to fix this flashing. Also, adjust the gradient a little so the particles don't take so long to fade in. Let's close the properties dialog and save our changes so far, then take a look at our reference clip to see how we're doing. Still need some work. The spinners are rotating the wrong direction, so the easiest way to fix this is to open the emitter properties dialog again and check the flip X option at the top of the particles page. The spinners also need to be larger, so increase the size value, and we want them to be different sizes, so increase size variation too. Now we have a decision to make. Are we going for good enough, which takes less work, or do we want to match the reference clip as closely as possible? They require different approaches, but I think we can pretty easily go from the first to the second. Comparing the reference effect and what we have right now, the biggest difference is that in the reference, the spinners conform to the different parts of the body, while in our version, the spinners are kind of all over the place. Still a fairly convincing effect, so let's refine it. I want some of the spinners to have different angles, so in the properties dialog, change the particle angle from specify to random, then change the range to 60. I think the spinners look pretty good for now, so let's move on to the other parts. There's an initial glow that happens, as well as a sort of blurring of Spock. We'll do the glow first. In the hierarchy of the properties dialog, select the sparkles particle type and click the Copy Particle Type button. Rename the new copy Glow. With Glow selected, click the Change Shape tab, then select Basic Blur from the list of available shapes, then click the Make Active button. We want a smaller number of larger particles here, so reset the Glow number graph and give it an initial small burst of particles but then quickly taper off, something like this. Increase the size of the particles then decrease the visibility. We want these particles to add some glow to the spinners, but not be overpowering. Close the properties dialog so we can see what we have so far. A little bright, but let's move on to the final component and then see what needs to be tweaked. The final component is the blurring that happens at the start of the transport. Since we need this to be under all of the other particles, we'll create a separate emitter. Select the existing emitter and copy and paste it. Now rename the bottom emitter Blur Fill, or something similar, then open the Emitter Properties dialog for it. Select the Sparkles particle type and delete it. Now click the Particles tab, uncheck Intense, and on the Colors tab, select Get Color from Layer. Now click OK to close the Properties dialog and see what we have. Turn off the upper emitter by clicking its icon in the hierarchy so we can isolate the Blurry Fill emitter. Looks like we need to do some adjustment. First, increase the visibility. Next, it looks like there is some tint color on this emitter, so decrease the tint strength to 0%. Seems like the particles are too big, so decrease the size and increase the number. Since the particle type number graph is animated, use the emitter number graph instead because it's easier to adjust. The final step is to have the background image display only after the transport sequence is underway.